more. More and more. More and more. More and more. More and more. So very thankful for the presence of the Lord that's here this morning. Thankful for the touch of God that is ever present in this house. Amen. I believe many of you already are leaving this house with the divine touch of God and strength. The touch that you needed today. Amen. Aren't you thankful that God is there to help us and strengthen us in time of need? And give us exactly what we need when we need it. Amen. 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 Just remain standing. If you're not standing, if you're physically able, I ask you to stand in honor to the Word of God. In the reading of the Word of the Lord. Thank you, Elder Randy. Didn't he do a marvelous job this morning? A marvelous job today. I love every line and every verse of the Word of God. Can you say amen? amen? There is something very powerful and there is something very truthful that we will be preaching to you today. I want to draw your attention to the book of Colossians. So very thankful that while we were on vacation that Elder Jared delivered the Word of God in regards to our focus this month, the Heritage Month, baptism in Jesus' name. How many is thankful for baptism in Jesus' name? How many is thankful that day you went down in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and washed away every sin? Went down an old man, came up a new man. Went down an old creature, came up a new creature. I want to thank Brother Copley. He did a marvelous job last Sunday preaching on the Holy Ghost and being drunk like we're supposed to be drunk. Amen. How many is thankful for the day you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen. Nothing like the power of the Holy Ghost. Today we're going to focus on a very wonderful truth of the Word of God, a, a truth that I love so very, very much. When you have this revelation and understanding, it brings power. Everyone shout power. power. So I draw your attention today to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I want to say to all of our guests once again, we're so thankful that you're able to be with us today and you have worshipped with us in the house of the Lord. Would you give them another warm welcome in the name of the Lord? Amen. Colossians chapter 2, be reading verse 6 through verse 9. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through verse 9. It's a very familiar portion of Scripture. We want to draw your attention to that text today. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through verse 9. If you're ready for the word of the Lord, shout amen. amen. If you love the word of God, shout amen. amen. If you live the word of God, shout amen. Amen. It says in verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Everyone shout, in Him. Amen. I'm going to read that verse again. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Everyone shout, Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. But then we have verse 8, where it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. I love verse 9. I'd have to say that this is probably one of my favorite scriptures in all of the Word of God. Verse 9 says, for in Him. Now you may say, who's Him? Well, look back at verse 6. Christ Jesus. The Bible says, for in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to read verse 9 with me, would you? For in him 
dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. By the help of the Lord, for the next 25, 30 minutes, I want to preach to you on this thought, I know who he is. Hallelujah, I know who he is. Amen. Would you lay your Bibles down? Would you raise your hands right now? And let's thank God for his word and the power of the word of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word of God right now. And I thank you for the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's ever present in this house. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor today. And I thank you right now in the name that is above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus. For God, you've given me a sure word. You've given me a quick word. You've given me a powerful word. And God, I pray that you would help me to deliver it to your people in the manner that you would see fit. I pray that revelation and understanding would come like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray a fresh anointing to come to my mind. I pray a fresh anointing would come to my tongue. I pray a fresh anointing would come to my lips of clay. I pray a fresh anointing would come to every heart, mind, and spirit of every believer and every guest that's in this house. I thank you for what you're going to do right now in Jesus' name. And everyone shout in Jesus' name. One more time, give the Lord a hang up of praise and thank him. Oh, clap your hands and give him praise. If you're thankful, you know who he is. Love him, worship him, magnify him, and glorify him. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I know who he is. God bless you. You can be seated in Jesus' name. You hope pastor preach this morning. We are living in a time when opinions are a dime a dozen. Can you say amen? amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you have an opinion? And I have an opinion. Everybody in this house has an opinion. Everybody in this world has an opinion. We all have opinions. Varied opinions and philosophies in theology is not a phenomena of the 21st century. Men have discussed the deity of God since the very beginning of time. Many are confused today by the numerous questions as to who God is. They can ask the question, where can God be found? Some will ask the question, what is his name? Others may ask the question, how many gods are there? It is important that we study the scripture until we know the truth. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me stop right here and tell you this as well, that the Bible says all scripture. Everyone shout all scripture. Shout it again, all scripture. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction, and righteousness. The word of God goes on to say as well that holy men of God spake or wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. And so I can tell you today that the scriptures and that which you hold in your hand today is the truth of the word of God. Man's opinion or the traditions of a denomination will not suffice if you are hungry for truth. Truth can only be found in the book of truth, the word of God. I am not talking about a book that you find at the family Christian bookstore somewhere. Hello? I'm not talking about a book that you may find in the library downtown somewhere. I'm not talking about a book that you may Google on the internet somewhere. I'm talking about the unadulterated word of God. I thank God for his word. I thank God for his word. What's going to stand the test of time? It is the word of God. And if you want to find the truth of God, look to the word of God. I want to say this today that I'm glad to tell you that the word of God declares to us who he really is. I have studied the scriptures and I know who he is. I have read this book, this Bible from cover to cover and I know who he is. I have studied the Hebrew and the Greek, and I know who he is. I have even talked to him myself. Aren't you thankful that you have a God that you can talk to yourself? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. There are so many out there that are worshiping other gods that they talk to, talk to, talk to, talk to, but that God does not talk to them back. 
that God does not minister to them and touch them and they do not feel his power and his presence. Brother William, I remember a time about three years ago when I was in Thailand. I had the honor and the privilege to go to a Buddhist temple. And you had to be careful. You had to wear certain things. You had to act a certain way. Even though you wasn't a Buddhist, they were very careful of who and, and who went into that temple and how they acted when they went into that temple. And I stood at a distance and I, I was amazed of how many people would come into that Buddhist temple and would take off their shoes and, and would bow before that Buddhist temple. And therefore they would, they would believe and, and, and ask that Buddhist temple, God, to do what it is that he needed them to do. But I've come to tell you that many of them, as a matter of fact, all of them, would leave that Buddhist temple the same way they came. They would leave that Buddhist temple still in pain and grief and and sorrow and torment. Uh, uh, they would leave that Buddhist temple still praying and believing that their God would answer that very need. Uh, but I am so glad to tell you today that my God isn't like any other God. I'm glad to tell you today that I can walk into this temple and I can begin to praise and magnify and glorify God Almighty. And all of a sudden, I begin to feel his power. I begin to feel the You begin to feel what you feel right now. There's something about the power of Almighty God. He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. He's here to set free. He's here to bring you out. If you're thankful for that kind of God, would you put your hands together and give God praise? I've come to tell you, my God hears me. My God moves on my behalf. My God makes a way where there seems to be no way. My God is alive and well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone shout amen. amen. That which I know didn't come from man's opinion. That which I know didn't come from a denomination. That which I know didn't come from tradition. I'm glad I know who he is. And by knowing who he is, it brings power. Oh yes, by knowing who he is, uh, it brings authority. And by knowing who he is, uh, it brings the supernatural. And by knowing who he is, brings a sovereign move of God in our midst. Uh, by knowing who he is, gives us a dominion uh, over every devil. And gives us dominion over every demon. Uh, hey, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, and gives us dominion over every ungodly spirit. Uh, and I'll go as far as saying this. Uh, and gives us a dominion over the very gates of hell. Uh, for I'm reminded that the Bible says that Peter upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it what are you talking about it was the rock the revelation of who Jesus Christ really was I've come to tell you upon this rock the revelation of who he really is the gates of hell shall not prevail I've come to tell you we've got power we've got authority and a revelation of who God really is all of you are thankful, clap your hands and give God praise right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. I've come to tell every demon I know who God is. I've come to tell every devil I know who God is. I've come to tell the very gates of hell I know who God is. And I've got power. I've got authority. I've got an anointing like none other. Everyone shout, I got a power. I've come to declare to you and set the record straight right now. There's one God. And there's only one God. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This doctrine is central to the Bible message for both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Teach it plainly, emphatically. Despite the simplicity of this message and the clarity with which uh, the Bible presents it, many who believe in the existence of God have not understood it. Even within Christendom, many people, including theologians, have not comprehended this beautiful and powerful message. However, I'm glad to tell you today that we, the North Charleston Apostolic Church, are monotheistic. We believe in one God, but further believe that the fullness of the Godhead is manifested in Jesus Christ. We believe that the Father, we believe that the Son, and we believe that the Holy Ghost are manifestations and modes and offices and relationships that the one God has displayed to man. The scriptures do not support the idea that there are multiple eternal personages within one God. Can't find it. 
The word of God which John wrote does not possess a distinctly separate existence from the Heavenly Father. According to John's first epistle in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7, the Bible says this, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. We can distinguish a person's Word and his Spirit from the individual, but they have no existence apart from him. An individual including his Word and his Spirit is one person, not three. It is the same with our Lord. Lord, our Lord God is one. Now, now, now let me slow things down here for just a minute and tell you that the word of God speaks of God in terms of being one. Everyone shout one. Many times the Bible calls God the Holy One. You'll find that in Psalm 71. You'll find that in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 4. You'll find that in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 10. And also in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 24. But you can look through the Word of God from the front to the back. Every line, every word, every paragraph, and every scripture. And you'll never find the words the Holy Two. And you'll never find the words the Holy Three. And you'll never find the words the Holy Many. All you will find is one. Now surely God could not make it plainer that no plurality whatsoever exists in the Godhead. In short, the word of God affirms that God is absolute one in number, an absolute one in power, an absolute one in authority. Uh, let, me, let me share the word of God with you for just a brief moment. I, I'm going to uh, quote some scriptures to you to prove to you what I'm talking about. Uh, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 8 says, Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Uh, Isaiah 45 and 6 says, There is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10 says, Have we not all one Father, and hath not one God created us? Romans chapter 3 and verse 30 says, Seeing it is one God which shall justify. I love Ephesians chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 that says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's above all and through all and in you all. I love Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 5. For thy Thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. I love Mark 12 and verse 32 that says, And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. We find that as we read through the pages of the word of God, listen to me, that it declares over 300 times that there is but one God. The scripture affirmed the absolute oneness of God. This was a key issue after Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt. While in captivity, a heathen society that worshipped multiple gods and various assemblages of divine beings surrounded the Israelites. Grouping three or more gods together into a divine triad was a common practice among all non-Hebrew societies. And in ancient Egypt, the gods of the Osiris and Isis and Horus formed a well-known trinity. As Moses was preparing the people to enter to the promised land and be delivered out of Egypt. It was vital that they reject the paganistic ideas about deity. They must have an understanding that there was one God that was going to deliver them. They had to have an understanding that there was one God that was going to bring them out of Egypt. They had to have an understanding that there was one God that was going to bring them to the place of the promised land. They had not been rescued and delivered from Egypt by three divine beings. Only one had brought them out. Therefore stand before the Israelites, Moses declared, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. These verses reveal that the God who delivered Israel out of bondage is one. And let me stop right here today under the anointing of the Holy Ghost on this Sunday morning and tell you that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that'll deliver us out of bondage is one. And the same God that'll set us free is one. And the same God that'll bring you and I out is one. And the same God that'll provide a way
way of an escape for you and I are one. The same God that will meet our need. The same God that will provide for us. And the same God that will bring us out of Egypt in our own promised land is one. He is neither a multiple being. He is not a diverse being. He is not a divided being. He is not a three person being. He is father in creation. He is son in redemption. And he is in Holy Ghost in regeneration. And his name is Jesus. And he is one. Everyone shout, he's one. We understand and know that today Egypt is symbolic of the world. We understand and know today that Egypt is symbolic of the bondage of the world and the captivity of the world. And I'm glad to tell you that the apostolic Pentecostal man and woman, boy and girl, that you are sitting near today at one time or another found themselves a slave to Egypt. They found themselves in bondage to Egypt. They found themselves as a captive of Egypt. However, there was a day There was a glorious day. There was a righteous day. There was a holy day when that one God, I'm speaking of, exercised his power and might and brought us out. The gods of Egypt tried to keep us in, but the one true living God of the heavenlies brought us out. Oh, yes. Let me remind you that when Moses came to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, He said, if you do not let them go, you're going to see the power and the might and the demonstration of the God I serve. And we know the story. There were plagues that were released. And then Pharaoh called on his gods. And he said, I need you to take care of Moses' God. Well, as we know in the word of God that their God was no might to Moses' God. The Egypt's God was no might to the holy God of Israel. And it has not changed. The gods of this world is trying to manipulate the God of the heavenly son. The God of this world is trying to keep you and I in bondage. And the God of this world is trying to enslave us to the things that God wants to deliver us and set us free from. But I've got to tell you today that there's no match for our God. There's no match for the Holy One of Israel. I've come to tell you that it doesn't matter what this world may do. It doesn't matter what Egypt may do. There's a God that'll step on the scene and say, I'm gonna deliver, I'm gonna bring you out, and I'm gonna set you free. There's nothing like our God and so we find that several specific statements in the New Testament confirm the truth of the oneness of God for an example Paul declared now a mediator is not a mediator of one but God is one and furthermore the apostle James stated thou believest that there is one God thou doest well the devils also believe and tremble Now, there's not a lot of things that I agree with the devils on. Matter of fact, there's nothing except one thing that I agree with. Hell and I don't agree on a lot of things. But there's one thing that hell and I stand in agreement on. There's one thing that myself and the devil stands on agreement on. There is one God. There is one God. That scripture alone will prove to us more than ever before that there's one God. For Lucifer was in heaven. He was there. He saw how many thrones there are in heaven. He knows there's not a father throne and a son throne and a Holy Ghost throne. He knows what John the Revelator has seen as well. That he said, I was caught up into heaven in the spirit and I looked and I saw one and one sitting on that throne. I've come to tell you, if the devil can believe it, honey, then we as a Pentecostal apostolic people can believe that there is one God and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil trembles at the fact that there is one God. 
because they know what kind of power and they know what kind of supremacy and superiority and they know what kind of sovereignty and demon and rule and authority there is in the oneness of God. The greatest tactic, employ, and plan and device and idea the enemy has ever conceived is when he put into motion this theology and believism that there are three separate entities in heaven uh, occupying three separate thrones. Uh, he knows how many there are in heaven. He knows how many thrones there are and he's declared from the very beginning but if I can just plant this seed uh, and get them believing there's this triune God up above uh, then their faith will be divided uh, and their prayers will be divided uh, and their worship will be divided uh, and their allegiance will be divided uh, and their loyalty will be divided uh, and their belief will be divided uh, and they will always be unstable and unbalanced and unsteady uh, and unsound and variable and changeable for the Bible says the double minded man or in this case uh, a triple minded man uh, is unstable in all his ways uh, you may ask the question preacher pastor why is it that there's so much power when an apostolic Pentecostal prays. You may ask the question, preacher, why is there so much power when an when an apostolic Pentecostal worships? You may ask the question, preacher, why is it there's so much power when an apostolic Pentecostal exercises their faith and speaks the word of faith and declares the truth of the word of God? Well, since you're asking, let me tell you, because we have a revelation of who he really is. He's the mighty God in Christ. He's the everlasting father. He's the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He's God robed in flesh. He's one God and Father of all, who's above all and through all and in you all. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, which was, and which is to come. The Almighty, I've got power, you have power. The Apostolic Pentecostal Church has power because we know who he is. Oh, if you're thankful, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hurry along to a close. I've come to tell you today that there are many verses that declare the power and the authority of God. Anyone must agree that there can only be one. For when the Bible talks about the Almighty, it tells us that God is the Almighty. For it says in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1, And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. Then it tells us that Jesus the Lamb is the Lord God Almighty. And it says that in Revelation chapter 15 and verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Then when, we, when, the, when the Bible talks about the Savior, it tells us that God is the Savior in Isaiah 43 and 11, where it says, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. But then you read through the word of God, and it tells us that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And Luke chapter 2, verse 11, where it says, For unto you is born this day, and the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord and then you go through the word of God and you read the word of God and you and you flip the pages of the word of God and then the Bible talks about the creator of all things well we know who the creator of all things is it's whom God right and so God created all things by himself and we find that in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 24 where it says thus saith the Lord thy redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretcheth forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by himself then we go to the book of Colossians where, where the writer Paul tells us that all things were created by Jesus Christ for it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and earth visible and invisible whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him or for him. And then we go through the word of God and we find when the Bible talks about all power, it tells us that God has all power in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 where it says both riches and honor come of thee and they reign us over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. And then you go through the word of God and now you find yourself in the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. And the Bible says, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then when you read the word of God, you come across this, this text in Exodus where it says that, that God is the I am. In Exodus 3, 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And then you go through the word of God, and then you read in John chapter 18 and verse 6 that the Bible tells us that Jesus is the I am. For it says, and as soon 
soon as then as he said, said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Why did they go backward and fall to the ground? I'll tell you why. Because the Jews understood that when Jesus said, I am he, they understood clearly that he was saying that he was God, according to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 15, or rather 14. And then you thumb through the word of God and you flip the pages of the word of God. And when the Bible talks about the first and the last, it tells us that God is the first and the last. In Isaiah 44 and verse 6, where it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And then you go through the word of God and you get to the book of Revelation. And then it tells us that Jesus is the first and the last. And it says, when I saw him, I felt his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and I am the last. And so I said all that to say this. So we see that the word of God provides us many scriptures declaring who God is and clearly pointing out that there is not a God of the Old Testament and not another God of the New Testament and yet another God of the church age of the Holy Ghost. The Lord God of the Old is the Christ of the New and the Spirit in us today, all one and the same. Not three gods, not three persons in a Godhead, not each one representing one third of a whole God. There is one God in the Old Testament. There is one God in the New Testament. There am I, Bobo Shatai. There is one God in the church age. And I'm glad to tell you that when you get to heaven, you're going to fall down and worship one God in all of eternity. And I'm glad I know who He is. Everyone shout, There's one God. Everyone shout, There's one God. Everyone shout, there's one God. God. The Bible says, let me declare to you that we must not base our doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ upon human traditions and philosophies and principles of this world. Unfortunately, the terms and concepts that characterize traditional Trinitarianism were borrowed from secular philosophy of the ancient world and they led to a distortion of the true doctrine of God. Instead of appealing to tradition and creeds and philosophies and man-made doctrines, we must adhere to the text and the teaching and the thought of Scripture itself and do not allow man to spoil or plunder or rob us through philosophy. We need today to make up in our mind that we will not allow man to spoil, plunder, or rob us through vain deceit. We need to determine this Sunday morning in our mind not to allow man to spoil or plunder or rob us by the traditions of men. We need to, I feel the Holy Ghost right now, we need to settle in our hearts today that we are not going to allow the rudiments of this world to distort, to alter, to modify, to change or to manipulate our understanding of who God really is. I may, may I remind us that all the roles and all the titles and all the attributes of God are invested in Jesus. Whatever God God is Jesus is. He's the incarnate God. He's the incarnate creator. He's the incarnate father. He's the incarnate word. He's the incarnate spirit. And Lord and Jehovah, God revealed in the flesh the human personification of the one true God. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead brought up. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what philosophy may say, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It doesn't matter what the traditions of men may say, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It doesn't matter what the principles of this world may say, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And I'm reminded what Zechariah prophesied. (sighs) Zechariah prophesied that a time would come when the Lord would be king over all the earth. And in that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. There was coming a day where there was going to be a name. (laughs) That was above every other name. Hallelujah. (laughs) And within that name would be all the power. And within that name would be all the authority. And in that name would be all the blessings. And in that name would be all the provisions that we would ever need. And in that name would be all the healings and all the deliverance that you would ever need. And in that name would be all the victories that you and I would ever need. When you would say that name, it would be the complete fulfillment of Jehovah Jireh. When you say that name, it would be the complete fulfillment of Jehovah Rasa. 
And when you say that name, it would be the complete fulfillment of Jehovah Nisi. When you would say that name, it would be the complete fulfillment of Jehovah Shalom and Jehovah Ra and Jehovah Sidkenu and Jehovah Shema. It would be a name that would be above every other name. And when the fullness of time came, God did justify the longings of his people and revealed himself in all his power and all his glory through a name that had been a secret through the foundation of the world that was locked in the vault of heaven before time ever began. But then God let the secret out and God unlocked the vault of heaven and that name was revealed and we find that name is Jesus. I've come to tell you today that Jesus is the combination of all the Old Testament names of God. It is the highest, most exalted name. It is the most eminent name. It is the most powerful name. Anybody glad you know who he is? I'm declaring Jesus Christ. It's the most supreme name. When you use the name of Jesus, it encompasses everything that God was, everything that God is, and everything that God shall be. It's in the name of Jesus. 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 Everyone shout Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. I'm glad I know who he is. He's Adam, an advocate, almighty, and amen, an angel of the Lord. He's the anointed apostle, author, and alpha. He's the babe, beginning, begotten, beloved, bishop, blessed, branch, and brazen serpent. I've come to tell you, he's the bridegroom, the bright, and morning star. He's the captain, the comforter, the child, the Christ, the commander, the constellation, and the cornerstone. Can I go a little further? The Bible says he's the day spring, the day star, a deliverer, desire of a nation, a door of the sheepfold. He's Emmanuel, the express image of God, the faithful witness, the father of eternity, the first fruits of the foundation and the fountain. He's the friend of sinners, the gift of God, the glory of God, the governor, the guide, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, the holy one of God, the holy one of Israel, and the horn of salvation. It goes on to say, and I'm not done. He's called the I am. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. He says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the door. He says, I am the true vine. And he said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And his name is Jesus. I think you ought to cup your hands and give God praise for you know who he is. Oh, come on. You've been delivered by that name. You've been called out by that name. You've been delivered by that name. I know who he is. I'm glad to have a revelation of who he really is. Musicians come. I don't have just a religion. I've got a revelation. There's a difference. I don't have just a theology. I have a revelation. I don't have just a doctrine of a church. I have a revelation. Matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying this. I don't even have an opinion. But I've got a revelation. I just don't know about him, but I know him. I know him in power, and I know him in demonstration, and I know him as my savior, and I know him as my healer, and I know him as my way maker, and I know him as my life giver, my provider, and I know him as my soul sanctifier. He is everything for everybody, everywhere, every time, and every way. He is God, and I'm glad I know who he is. I'm reminded of an old song. I'm going to take you all back to camp meeting. I'm going to take you all back to where you first received the Holy Ghost. And I think we need to visit those places more frequently. I'm going to say that again. I think we need to visit those places more frequently. I'm reminded of a song, Sister Jean, that I cut my teeth on in the pew. And on a Sunday morning, I can hear them singing, the mighty God is Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! The Prince of Peace is he. The everlasting Father. The King eternally. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. The wonderful in wisdom by whom all things were made. The fullness of the Godhead and Jesus is displayed. Oh, we stop at verse one, but we about to go into verse two. You ready? 
Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah, Lord of hosts. The omnipresent spirit who fills the universe. The advocate, the high priest. The lamb for sinners slain. The author of redemption. Oh, glory to his name. We're about to step into verse 3 right now. Turn to him and tell him we're about to step into verse 3 right now. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Oh, y'all know it. The living word incarnate. The helpless sinner's friend. Our wisdom and perfection. Woo! Our righteousness and power. Yea, all we need in Jesus. We find this very hour. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. We about to step into verse four. Y'all didn't know there's four verses, did you? Our God, for whom we waited, will be the glad refrain of Israel recreated when Jesus comes again. Lo, he'll come and save us our king and priest to be. For in him dwells all the fullness and the Lord of all is he. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all in him. Oh, come on, anybody glad you know that it's in the Lord Jesus Christ? Anybody glad you know it's all in him? No matter what you need, no matter what you need, it's all in him, my healing. My deliverance, my healing is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, the Holy Ghost is in this house right now. I want you to stand to your feet all across this building. Stand to your feet all across this building. The Holy Ghost is here right now. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him, whatever you need, it's all in him. Tell him, whatever you need, it's all in him. Tell him, if you need a miracle, it's all in him. If you need deliverance, it's all in him. I've been to the water, and I know it's all in him. I've been to the altar, and I know it's all in him. I've been to the Holy Ghost Spirit, and it's all in him. I've been to an apostolic and Pentecostal church, and the Holy Ghost has gotten a hold of me, and I know it's all in him. Turn neighbor and tell him, you need something from the Lord right now? Then get ready. We're about to worship the one true God. Tell them, get ready. We're about to magnify the one true God. Get ready. We're about to praise the one true God. You're about to feel the power and you're about to feel an anointing in this house like you've never felt before. Because when you get about 300 apostolic Pentecostal, Holy Ghost field baptized in Jesus' name, pew jumping, owl running, one God believing people, then something is going to happen. Something is going to fall on you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Here's what I want you to do right now. Take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside right now and tell him we're about to pray in the Holy Ghost in the revelation and understanding of who God really is. We're about to pray in the Holy Ghost with an understanding that he is Jesus is the mighty God in Christ. We're about to understand and pray in the Holy Ghost with a revelation that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Are you ready to receive it right now? Throw that hand in the air right now and pray in the Holy Ghost and receive it right now. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak a touch of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Jesus. He it's all in him. Come on, receive right now. The oneness of God is in this house. Oh yes, as you praise that one God, it's gonna fall on you. As you praise that one God, it's gonna rest on you. As you pray, I speak healing now. I speak deliverance now. Oh, it's all in him. a moment. I want you to take the hand of the neighbor you're standing beside. Some of you already let loose of their hands. But God is desiring to do a mass work in this house right now. 
God is desiring to do a good work in this house right now. You're about to call on that one God that I'm talking about. You're about to worship that one God I'm talking about. And I want you to believe that as soon as you begin to praise him and magnify him, God is going to do what it is you need him to do right now. I want you to raise your hands as high as you can raise them. And I want you to declare the name of Jesus. Come on, declare the name of Jesus. Everything you need is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. My healing's wrapped up in the name of Jesus. My deliverance is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. My power is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. The very gates of hell understand. The devil and hell and I agree that there's one God and his name is Jesus. There's power in that. There's an anointing in that. There's deliverance in that. I speak it now. I receive it now. I let go now in Jesus' name. I receive what I need right now. I speak the name of Jesus over every situation. I speak the name of Jesus over every circumstance. I speak the name of Jesus over every devil. I speak the name of Jesus over every circumstance. God, I pray that you minister to your people. For we know it's all in you. It's all in you. It's all in you. Put your hands together. We're about to have us a Pentecostal church. Oh, listen to what you're singing. We need in Jesus. We find this very hour in Jesus. Oh, yes. The revelation of who he is. Some of you are probably wondering why Sister Patum is dancing down that aisle and walking across the front of this auditorium. She's from the nation of Thailand, a Buddhist nation, and she worshiped that Buddhist that I was talking about. But now she understands and knows that everything you need is wrapped up in Jesus, is wrapped up in that God that we love and worship. I've come to tell you, it's everything is in it. Come on, we're about to have us some camp meeting in here.
said thank you. Come on, is there any apostolic Pentecostal? One God, Holy Ghost field, baptized in Jesus' name. People that loves God and believe we're on the winning side and believe that God is fighting for us. Anybody glad you know who he is? Anybody glad you know who he is? I'd like to tell you something. Whenever Brother or Pastor was preaching, I was speaking in the tongues and I understood every word that he said. I understood what I said. It bared out to what he was talking about. Praise God. Oh, glory. I believe it. I believe it. Glory. I was speaking in Hebrew the very words that he was talking about the same time he was preaching it. And God let me know what I was saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, he turned the Hasira Bodhi, you know, but I do He's a mighty God, and I praise him with all my heart. Boy. Give the Lord another hang up of praise and thank him. Ah, thank him, but you know he's the mighty God in Christ. And his name is Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Withrow. Thank you, Brother Smith. Didn't they do a wonderful job singing? I love our pillars of the faith. Turn your neighbor and tell him his name is Jesus. Ah, God.